This is the JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. Hello, guys. Hello, hello. All right, well, this one is in honor of Mother Nature being pissed. Yes. We've got our first snowstorms of the season coming to, what is that, today and tomorrow. Mm-hmm. A little bit of flurries, a few flurries oh of God, snow don't showers. Buy milk and bread and beans. Don't, yeah, run, run into the, the crisis bunker. Um, and then Thursday, we're going to get a little snow turning into rain and wind. So we're going to have some, eh, but... We, they got it worse in other places. A once in a decade bomb cyclone is sl- sweeping through the northwest United bomb States. Cyclone. I am the bomb cyclone. And parts of Canada early this morning. Canada. Uh, leaving at least one person dead and hundreds of thousands without power across Washington State, California, and BC. That is British Columbia. In Seattle and neighboring cities, strong winds are tumbling trees, some falling on houses and placing lives at risk. In Linwood, north of Seattle, a woman in her 50s was killed when a large tree fell on a homeless encampment shortly after 7 p.m. God, you know, life ain't hard enough. Damn, Living at a homeless encampment. And now a tree done fell on you. And a tree falls on you. More than 650,000 customers lost power in the early hours of today in Washington, while 140,000 customers were without power in British Columbia. Um, the National Weather Service reported notable wind gusts across the region, including off the coast of B.C., where the winds were blowing at 101 miles an hour. What the? Gusts, gusts of up to 72 to 77 were recorded in Washington, including at Cape Elizabeth on the Olympic Peninsula and Crystal Mountain. It's severe out there. Trees are coming down all over the city. Multiple falling onto homes, the fire department in Bellevue said uh, east of Seattle. Uh, if you are able, head to the lowest floor you can and stay away from the windows. Don't go outside if you can avoid it. Damn. Yeah. They, uh, I got to let my dog out to pee. Yeah, right. Uh, I have a question. Okay. Why have I never heard of a bomb cyclone before? I don't know. Has this been a thing forever and we just never heard about it? The powerful bomb cyclone will combine with the atmospheric river. To unleash a yeah. month's worth of rain, hurricane force winds, and feet of mountain snow to parts of the Pacific Northwest and Northern California. Oh yeah, because they got the atmospheric river happening. Yeah, so it's a it's a double deuce right oh, there. Man. Um, DP the bomb cyclone. I'm trying to see if they give you the history of the bomb cyclone. I think they're just making up names to make it sound cooler. You know, meteorologists you know say the same thing every time, so you got to change the name. You know. You could call it a little bit of wind. It, it's a little breezy. No, oh, it's a bomb cyclone. Okay. How rare are bomb cyclones? Bomb cyclones are most common in the winter season and occur more frequently off the northeastern U.S. coast. Uh, however, they can form uh, on the west coast. Blah, 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 blah. Um, the phrase is rooted in the word bombogenesis which meteorologists and atmospheric scientists have been using since the 1940s. Huh. This largely came from the notion that some storms developed explosively, not literally like a bomb. <laughs> Silly goose. Uh, oh, yeah. So it has been happening. They just decided to call it a bomb cyclone because it sounds cool. But that word is cool. Bombogenesis. Damn. That sounds like a good band name right there. Yeah. We are Bombogenesis. The measurement needed to determine whether a cyclone can be classified a bomb cyclone can be tricky, but it largely concerns a swift drop in pressure. Okay. That's wild. They're expecting up to four feet of rain in this, or four feet of snow in the Sierra Nevadas. (laughs) God, can you imagine just getting four feet just dumped on you? Damn. So stay, stay in your basement. That's what they're saying to you. Yeah, run. Hot damn. All right. Speaking of mom nature, a cruise ship. Yeah. <laughs> a Royal Caribbean cruise ship got hit by a huge gust of wind and tilted onto one side for several minutes. On top of that, passengers are, are saying that my heart goes on from Celine Dion from t- the Titanic movie. Happened to be playing on the PA while it was happening. Yeah, I'm assuming in one area of the ship. It's not like it was piped through the whole goddamn ship. <laughs> they did it on the whole ship-wide. 
They're like, oh, something's gonna happen. <laughs> That's how you ease the. That's how you ease the population into a tragedy. Right. Yes. Yeah, Celine. Every, everybody, sit back and listen to Celine. Ah. The sweet vocal stylings. Ah, uh, Celine. Uh, let's take a listen here. Here we go. We were in the theater and they were playing a Celine Dion song from Titanic, <laughs> and we actually thought it was part of a special effects. The ship started to tip to one side. All the bottles and all the glasses fell off the bar. And we're like, wow, this is w- w- amazing. And then we realize, look at the crew's faces. This isn't uh, special effects. <laughs> uh, this-, <laughs> this is so realistic. Is, yeah, well, <laughs> that, like, you would think that would like <clears throat> on, be, on the international rules of things not to play on a cruise ship is anything from that movie. I mean, what is that's just like foreboding. You know, get ready, everybody. It may split in two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You would think, but Celine, she's so popular. Yeah. And I suppose people want to do the god dang queen of the world, king of the world pose on the boat. Do you think they, do they, okay, you've been on a cruise now. Do they have a special spot at the bow where you can do that? Just to get the vibe? We walked around. I don't know if we were supposed to be up there, but we were up walking around on, the front of the boat area. You could totally do it up there. That's not, you, you can do it on the front of the boat? Yeah. I mean, there was, there was like a VIP area, chill area that was up there. And it was the middle of the night when we were up there. Uh, so you can there just was sneak a, into There was like a deck area that you could totally have done it. The poop deck? Ah, uh, yes. Do they have a poop deck? Slop the poop deck. Do they have a poop deck? I don't know. They don't have it titled or anything? Because that would just, not I don't know. Sh- sure. That they would title it. I think any deck could be a poop deck if you try hard enough. <laughs> and you're willing to, <laughs> willing to get arrested. I, yeah, why not? Uh, the video uh, of the ship tilting is crazy. So one passenger said it felt like a 45 degree angle and lasted three minutes. And the captain's like, it was 14 degrees. Calm down. But that is a lot for a big ship. Uh, tables and chairs were going everywhere. And, like, the bars, so, like, the little cabinets above the bar where all the booze is kept, the they slid open and all the booze came out. Yeah. Which I thought, you know how, like, in your, your RV, they're all, like, snapped shut. Your cabinets are snapped shut so they don't come open. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to be like on the boat, too. But clearly. Do they not? Well, on those not, big old ships, probably don't think maybe that's extraneous because... You don't expect the ship to tilt that hard. It doesn't, right. It never happens. So, wild. That's so crazy. No, thanks. I don't know if I want to cruise. Oh, really? You know, You've never cruised? That no. surprises me. Ugh, everybody should cruise at least once. I'm not scared of boats, but I've just, I've heard so many, you know, between a lot of the stories of the neurovirus, number one, scary. Right. You just got to wash your damn hams. My good friends went out on a cruise. Wash your hams. My good friend, <laughs> wash your hands. <laughs> uh, good friends of mine went out on a cruise, and then as they were out in the Caribbean, a hurricane came through to the into the into the Gulf, or yeah. like super. So they couldn't even go back to their port of call. So on their way home, they had to get transferred to Louisiana, and then they had to get transferred back to Miami from Louisiana. Yeah. Well, I suppose that happens. It didn't. That did not happen I mean, to us. Safety first, but yeah, God, just I don't know. The feeling of being that stranded with that many people freaks me out. You don't really realize you're there with that many people, and you can kind of be as isolated as you want to be. You can find space. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. All right, uh, and you you can do the little expeditions and stuff. Now, from the people I've talked to that are regular cruisers. So when you go and you're at port, people will leave and they're like, I'm going to go get souvenirs. <laughs> um, if you stay on the boat, everybody's gone. So you have, let, there's like three people in the pool with you. Oh. So that's the time to go and do everything on the ship is when you're at at the, the dock. Oh, I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some, I get it. They yeah. don't mess with you. I was on a <clears> – <throat> this is my case in point, I guess – I took a ferry when I was visiting my folks in Florida. Hey. We, we, had, we took a ferry 
His name was Steve. He's very nice. No. Um, and it was a, like a three-hour boat ride. And we were going to, I don't even remember where the dang ferry took you. But um, everybody was really excited to get on this ferry. So there, it's five in the morning. We're all loading up. And everybody is drinking like heavily. Okay. They're just crazy drinking. And uh, we're just sitting there chilling in line. We're like, it's five in the morning. Right. Why is everybody so crazy? And they're serious. So we get on the boat. We start cruising. The wind get the wind whips up a little bit. The waters are choppy, and about halfway through this three hour ferry jet boat thing, mm-hmm. which it's pretty, it it rode pretty smooth on water, but it was listing a bit. Mm-hmm. Like ninety percent of the boat started turning green, and all these people because it was chilly. We're Wisconsin people, so we went up onto the upper deck where the air was blowing. Yeah, but they're all the people that stayed in the cabin. Got freaking sick as hell. The line for the toilets was like, you know, there's only like 300 people on the boat, but like the line was like 25 to 50 people long, all waiting to get in there to to crap and puke. There were people laying in the commissary area, which was a common area where you'd get food and snacks and stuff. They were laying under tables, green, moaning, crying. It was like a puke fest mess. Because they were drunk and it was bumpy. They were super hammered. And and the boat ride got nasty. What? In the oh, hell? we were going to Key West. That's what it was. It was a Key West Express. Ah, uh, yeah. And yes. that's why that's they why were they drinking. Were hammered. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I remember now. Mm-hmm. But oh mm-hmm. my God, I've never seen more miserable people. Like for this whole like hour and a half, I just go down there just to look because I was kind of getting my jollies <laughs> out of it because I was like, let's go see this lady. And she's she's under the table just gripping her jacket and just crying and like, oh my God, this is horrible. Ever just super hammered at like six in the morning, just sloshed and green and puking that sounds everywhere. Terrible. That's what I think every cruise is in my mind. Well, um, <laughs> no, <laughs> um, that sounds terrible. It was horrible. Uh, there was nothing like that really happening on the cruise that I saw. Big boats, I suppose. that's a way bigger boat. Uh, it did get <laughs> choppy, so. We went on a catamaran trip thing the last day. Um, We went snorkeling. And then on the way back, it was a little weird, a little bumpy. And then, and we, we were told there would be lunch, but (laughs) there was not. It was a bang of chips. (laughs) Sounds like the fire festival. (laughs) So, So we went out snorkeling. I ate edible, went out snorkeling. Thinking there'd be lunch on the way back. We're eating, we're drinking our rum punch. So we're on empty tummy, rum punch, edible, bag of chips. Get on the boat. And the lonely ones are going to be playing. And we're like, oh my God, we have to like clean up and go see the lonely ones. So we're getting ready. And we're like, okay, we got to be careful because we're we're on edibles and booze right now, and a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> so we get, and the lonely ones were playing at the back of the ship. I think that was a factor. So it was windy and choppy, and we were like starting to feel weird. And that's when I was like, okay, hopefully they don't play very long, because. <laughs> This might get bad, um, but that was the only time you could feel the boat kind of being weird and wonky. Oh yeah. Um, I do not know how much of that was the edible rum punch, Cool Ranch Dorito factor. That's quite a combo. And her shabby boat the, ride. Not the pairing we were looking for. <laughs> um, but yeah, and the catamaran, right? Like it was. I th- just this combination of everything. Cats usually cut through the water pretty good, though. Yeah? So. But I guess when it's really that choppy, you're going to be up and down quite mm-hmm. a bit, huh? Yeah. The feeling. I had a term for that. I, well, I, don't, I didn't make up the term, but there's a family term going around called the juicy jaw. You heard of that? Oh, man. That's the feeling you get right before you're about to puke. You lose it. You get yeah. the juicy jaw. The mouth starts filling up. You feel in the back of the throat. Mm-hmm. No cruises for this guy. I think I'll be okay without it. So I went because the lonely ones. I went to support them. Well, that's sweet. I like those guys. I like those guys too. They're pretty neat. 
people, relax. What a complete waste. We are killing it online. Have you guys checked the comments? Of cyberspace. <laughs> Smoke That Skin Wagon says, you guys are killing it. The JJO Morning Show Podcast. We're internet sensation. Workman's Relief, for whatever the job throws at you. Like THC products derived from legal hemp. These are legit delicious. Free shipping with products over $75. Order yours at workmansrelief.com. For whatever the job throws at you. Johnny and D, nowhere but JJO. Hi, hi. Hello, how are you doing? Good. <clears throat> Thieves broke into the grounds of Windsor Castle, uh, King Charles residence west of London, and stole two vehicles from Royal Land, police said, in a major breach of security. Yeah, I'd say. The incident took place October 13th, but was first reported Sunday by British tabloid The Sun. Yeah. Thames Valley Police confirmed last month's theft in a statement to CNN. Uh, police said the burglary was reported around 11.45 p.m. and that the perpetrators... Uh, entered a farm building on Royal Land. The suspects made off with a black Isuzu pickup and a red quad. Whoa. Uh, adding, no arrests have been made and the investigation is ongoing. Sun reported that two masked men scaled a six-foot fence to enter the Crown Estate land, then used the stolen truck to smash through a security gate and flee the scene. Holy crap. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty successful heist. For an Isuzu truck? Damn. I mean, think about I don't know. Messing with the royals. But though Windsor Castle is one of King uh, Charles and Queen Camilla's residences, the pair were not staying at the castle at the time of the reported burglary. Charles was in Scotland and didn't return to London until the following day. The prince and princess of Wales <clears throat> and their three children live at Adelaide Cottage, a four-bedroom grade two listed house, which is also in the grounds of Windsor Castle, and would likely have been home on the night of the security breach. Buckingham Palace told CNN it never comments on security matters, as did Kensington Palace. Oh, yeah. Back in, back in Christmas Day 2021, a man broke into the grounds of Windsor Castle armed with a crossbow in an attempt to assassinate Queen Elizabeth II, Yeesh. who was in the royal residence at the time. The late queen was unharmed, although the intrusion sparked serious questions about palace security, especially when it emerged that her repeated attempts to summon help were ignored. Oops. Wow. That's... Uh, Jaswant Singh Chail was 19 when he attempted to kill the queen, was sentenced to nine years in jail in 2023. I'm surprised it wasn't more. Yeah. No, that's crazy. Attempted murder of the queen, you'd think you'd just get shackled in the city square for like ever. Yeah. Hmm. They're pretty serious over there. I thought they were. I don't yeah. know about that. I don't know about their prison system, really. I don't know anything about the British prison system. I don't either. What are they, uh, like, just give you some... Tea and but no biscuits and they, yeah, no biscuits and they thank you for everything. <laughs> thank you very much. Go on your way. Very well. You can have tea but no biscuits. Very well then. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, oh, I right. don't know nothing about it either. Yeah, you never hear about it. Can't be that bad. Well, it's, it's got nothing on our prison system. I can tell you that I was much. Say we've got the best prison system in the world. <laughs> well, we got the biggest. That's for sure. We do have a lot of people in there. All right, it's uh, it's not even Thanksgiving yet, and some people are already pulling out tasers on their family members. <laughs> Getting a practice round in. Who next? A 61-year-old woman in Florida named Cheryl Hyatt was arrested last week during a domestic disturbance. She apparently flipped out when her daughter said she wanted to leave to live with her father. Uh... Cheryl's 90-year-old mother was also there at the time. Cheryl was so upset she pulled out a pink taser and a kitchen knife, pointed to both her and her, pointed at her daughter and her mother, and shouted, "I have a taser! I have pepper spray! Mm -hmm. Who's first? That's right! Don't taser me, bro! Don't taser me, bro! Don't taser me, bro! Don't taser me, bro! It burns like fire from my head down to my toes! Oh, please don't, please don't, please don't taser me, bro!" My God. So this this wild lady also blocked the door to keep her family members from leaving, but the daughter eventually escaped through the garage, and the grandmother removed the barricade to get out the front door. Not grandma, dude. Wow. So no one got tased? No one got tased, bro. Ah, uh, man. Uh, those, the pink, I've seen the pink stun guys, not the pink tasers, though. Is that, can, you have, can you have a taser? Is that legal in this state? I don't. I don't know. Our, let's find out. 
are tasers uh, illegal in Wisconsin? I've seen the the pink stun guns. They're pretty. They're pretty cute. You can get some that are pretty high, like pretty juicy, like high powered, um, and they make the noise. <laughs> Yeah, which, the arc. Mm-hmm. Ooh, the scary arc. Sound. Yeah, it is scary. And that's, it is scary. That's enough to make, hopefully, the criminal pee his pants and run away. Yeah. I think that's the idea. Crackle, crackle, crackle. Mm-hmm. All right, it is legal to have a taser in Wisconsin, but there are restrictions. Okay. Adults over 21 can own and keep a taser in their home or business without a permit. However, it's a class H felony to carry a taser anywhere. Else, without a concealed carry license or a carrying case. How am I supposed to get it from my truck to the business? In a case? In your crotch? In your trunk, perhaps? You must be at least, but that's not going to give you any security. Wait a second, I got to get in my trunk. Uh, You must must be at least 18 years old to purchase a taser in Wisconsin. Which, But 21 to possess it? Correct. (laughs) What? (laughs) Your government's hard at work, people. <laughs> Your government's hard at work. That makes perfect sense. Thank you. Background checks are not required to purchase a taser. You can't carry a taser in state or local government buildings, including schools. You can carry a taser in grocery stores and private businesses with a permit. Yeah, you need to have your concealed carry. Unless otherwise posted. You can't uh, open carry. You can't openly carry one. Criminal pen- penalties, serious criminal penalties apply to those arrested for illegally carrying, transporting, buying, or manufacturing a taser. Oh. A little homemade one? I'm not going to try to make a homemade taser, dude. <laughs> it's one of, those, one of those big, you remember in science class, those big, huge square batteries? You just hooked yeah. that up to a couple of nipple twisters and just zack. <laughs> no. oh, love it. Oh, that's terrible. Um. <laughs> Oh, I could just see it now. Some dude out in his garage working on his homemade taser. Science. It's <laughs> science. I'm doing my projects. Leave me alone. <laughs> you come in here, I'm going to zap you. <laughs> oh, no. You hear me, kids? That's bad. All right. The holidays are coming up fast. Yeah. A lot of family infighting in your in your future. I- I see your future. The ma- Uncomfortable oh. and awkward. Uh, uh, <clears throat> now there, there are many topics that can start a fight, and uh, here's the here are the main ones and the best way to avoid them. A poll found forty percent of families deal with open dis- disagreements around the holidays, and that's without factoring in the election. That's election aside. Oh wow! Politics is always the number one topic that always starts a fight. But it didn't win by much. Here are the top three. 34% of people say politics is the frequent point of tension in their family. Right. Number two, family dynamics and past grievances, 32%. So ongoing stuff that's been brewing over. And then Uh, it bubbles over. Yes, the generational traumas. Life is hard. (sighs) Some people make it harder on you. And we understand that. You bury your face in some mashed potatoes and keep your mouth shut. So, <laughs> it's just so hard. And then it's like, I just get tired of shutting up. <laughs> well, in this line of work, we don't really shut up too well. You know, so, I know. No. And then it's like, sometimes you just don't want to be the nicer person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, sometimes, like, why can't I be the dick? And then you try it, and you know it doesn't feel right, and you're not true to form. And then, right. Then it, wor- then it hurts even worse, and it hurts yourself then. You're hurting yourself. Shut up, Kai. <laughs> I just want to be the dick. I'm out of here. Just That's once. it. I come in here to help you. I come in here to stand in. I'm on three hours of sleep. Screw you, D. Oh. All right. <sighs> And the all third, right. the number three, <laughs> you, you got me all hot and bothered right there. Ooh. There's a tie between relationships and finances, both 25%. So try to avoid phrases like, oh, that wife of yours is why you don't have any money. Oh, for Christ's sake. Go ask your mother. Yeah, uh, I suppose. Man. Yeah. Oh, man. My grandma was the queen of snide comments. Oh, really? She, she, and if anything, if you ever said anything to her, she'd be like, well, when I die, there may be something for you, but maybe there won't. Oh, my God. Why don't you make something of yourself? Oh. 
That, yeah. was, that was my life with my grandma. Wow, that was wonderful. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, arguing <laughs> about these things, it's usually pointless. But here's another reason to avoid them. There's a one in three chance it becomes a war. A poll found a third of holiday fights end up escalating into lasting rifts that can impact your relationships for years. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I'll never look at pistachio salad the same after it came flying at my face. Oh, you mm-hmm. got hit by pistachio salad? Yeah. Did it taste good? Oh, it always tastes good. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. My sister I was so dumb. I don't know, and I still don't know. I'm still not positive what happened because I was instructed to add more Cool Whip to the pistachio salad, and then it was a whole, I can't do anything right, and then it was pistachio salad flying at my face. With the bowl? No. Okay. Well, if it would have been the whole bowl, that would have been a problem. Yeah. Oh, man. So Whatever. The holidays. Triple A expects a record number of Americans to travel for Thanksgiving. Here's when you do and don't want to hit the road. They're expecting just under 80 million people to head out this year. That's up from 78 million last year. 72 million are going to drive. 5.8 million will fly, and 2.3 million will take buses, trains, and other modes of transportation. Trains, planes, and automobiles. Those aren't pillows. <laughs> Worst days to leave. It depends on where you're headed. But in general, the worst times to be on the road are next Tuesday from 1P to 7P. Yeah, I um, figured. And then the following day, Wednesday, from 1P to 5P. Yeah. And if you see some Cousin but Eddie's like on the of, road, don't be scared. Right. Day <laughs> of is usually fine, though. Like I, Right? I, think, I, I yeah. seem to remember that from past years. Most people don't travel on Thanksgiving proper. Unless you're like one of the folks that has to do... Two Thanksgivings or whatever. Oh, mm, my God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Worst times to be headed home. Sunday, December 1st, between noon and 6, and Monday, December 2nd, between 9 and 6. That Monday is rough because there's also regular commuter traffic. Mm-hmm. And like they say, the best day to drive, Thursday. Yeah. Not a ton of traffic. That's right. So, do you have a little song for me? I do. Oh, my God. I'm playing uh... it. She's in the kitchen Preparing Thanksgiving Over the stove she's slaving Looking hot in her apron And I ask her if there's anything I can do She smiled and said, boy, I've got the perfect job for you Would you mind stuffing the turkey? Make sure you stuff was a virgin in the ways of thanksgiving she was patient and forgiving said go ahead put your whole fist in but make sure to keep the legs spread open wide but grandma it feels mushy and slippery inside keep stuffing that turkey boy and i think just maybe you'll be making your own Chiblet gravy Keep it up, keep stuffing that turkey Work that old bird like a young buck should Almost there, keep stuffing that turkey Your grandpa never stuffed it so good Don't stop, keep stuffing that turkey got it in grandma's eye and when you're done stuffing that turkey grandma's gonna let you eat some pie a big mouthful of grandma's pie we thought uploading to the cloud Uh, was something completely different the jjo morning show podcast (laughs) 
Workman's relief for whatever the job throws at you. Like THC products derived from legal hemp to help you relax after a long day or just chill over the weekend. No need to drive out of state to get your THC products. Order yours at workmansrelief.com. Johnny and D, JJO. An alleged drunk driver was uh, seen ripping around a busy parking lot holding what appeared to be an open container of alcohol after taking Texas state troopers on a chaotic high speed cross county chase. Zero F's to give. Turns out. Audrey Marie Schneider, 37, was driving down I-35 in Comal County, Texas, near San Antonio in her white Toyota SUV on Thursday when a state trooper attempted to pull her over for a traffic violation around 2 p.m. Instead, Schneider reportedly ignored the officer and sped away, igniting a destructive high-speed chase. She was like, nah. No, she led, nah. the, she led the trooper. Nah. <laughs> Not this time, buddy. She then led the trooper on a reckless pursuit through Comel and Bexar counties, driving erratically on the highway, ramming into multiple cars, including a police cruiser, and eventually into a shopping plaza. A video of Schneider's uh, reckless driving around the shopping center with patrol cars hot on her tail shows the alleged drunk driver circling the parking lot at an alarming rate of speed, which what appears to be a cocktail in her hand as onlookers try to keep their distance from the mayhem. Her SUV is eventually cornered down a row of cars. What person out there hasn't whipped donuts in a parking lot with a beer in their hand? Come on now. (laughs) Hold my beer. Let's take a look. Come on. Uh, They eventually cornered her down a row of cars, two police uh, vehicles briefly trapping her. She's then seen hitting the gas, grabbing the rear of her SUV into one of the cop cars, then slamming into a civilian vehicle, giving her enough clearance to get away. The hot pursuit finally ended outside a salon in the shopping center. She jumped out of her vehicle barefoot, of course, (laughs) in her jammies, hair a mess, bolted into the business, but was chased down by the trooper who entered the salon. uh, I got to get my hair did. And the the officer was allegedly... (laughs) (laughs) Uh, This is uh, chaos. Yeah. Oh, my God. It gets better. Uh Oh, she, no, she, uh, she allegedly assaulted the police officer, and he placed her under arrest. Trooper's not hurt in the scuffle. No injuries were reported during the chaos. She's then seen being taken out of the, uh, the business by cu- uh, in cuffs by officers, smiling bizarrely and repeating, I'm so sorry. Is Are I- you? <laughs> I don't, oh, think, yeah. I don't think she is. You should no. see her her, uh, her mug shot. She is just smiling like she did something good. Right. Um, as officers pin her against the cruiser and search her, she interacts with the crowd of onlookers, joyfully yelling things like, Santa's coming. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm back, biatches. <laughs> Schneider was eventually at, uh, was evaluated at the scene for injuries before being taken to the Bexar County Jail. Uh-huh. Uh, we might need to do a little psych screen on her. Uh-huh. I'm back. Although it is possible she was just having a crazy day. I'm just drunk as hell. Yeah. Uh, she faces a slew of charges, evading arrest, aggravated assault on a public servant, driving while intoxicated with an open container of alcohol in her car. Yeah. It's not her first incident involving driving and alcohol. Not she, shocked. she faced a charge of obstruction of a highway while intoxicated in 2017. But records show the charge was dismissed, dismissed due to her being granted deferred education. Ad- she took ju- drunk adjudication. Class. Yeah, she went to drunk class. She went to drunk class. Yeah. <sighs> well, she might have to go back. Hey Amen. Let's keep it up with the drunk stuff here. Police body camera video show how an attempted arrest in September quickly escalated. The footage obtained through a Michigan Freedom of Information Act shows James Michael Kerr um, <clears throat> flee a deputy on a lawnmower. Ignoring his command to stop and pulled a gun from the mower. No. He just has a has a gun. Just That's right. how you get shot. The deputy then tases him. And what a nice guy. And Kerr, police reported, shot himself in his own hand. <laughs> Kerr is charged with assault with intent to murder, <laughs> carrying a firearm uh, in the commission of a felony and resisting arrest. F around, find out, dude. Oh, my God. Man, I would have been like, look what you did. Look what you did! Uh, (laughs) Jackson County Sheriff's Department uh, had a warrant for Kerr's arrest. Uh, He was wanted for alleged probation violation for failing to pay child support, of course. Mm -hmm. Too busy mowing the lawn. And shooting. Henderson found Kerr, 41, on the riding lawnmower in Leone Township and told him to get off. He refused. Instead, he accelerated the lawnmower. I mean, how how fast can it go? The deputy briefly chased him on foot. 
Yeah. Right? He's just running after the goddamn lawnmower. <laughs> Repeatedly telling him to stop before pulling out a taser moments before Kerr comes to a stop in a ditch. Uh, he says he's he says he's getting off and he puts his hands in the air as he steps toward, off the riding lawnmower. As Henderson uh, warns Kerr he will be tased if he attempts to run away, Kerr walks back to the lawnmower, reaches next to the seat, and pulls out a black handgun. Dude, you are lucky you didn't get shot and killed. Oh, my. Are you kidding me? Oh, no. Uh, police officer fired his taser and Kerr falls behind the lawnmower with a groan a second before a gunshot is heard. As Kerr fell behind the lawnmower, Henderson dropped the active taser and pulled his sidearm, demanding Kerr to drop the gun. The deputy was not injured, but Kerr shot himself in the hand while being tased. <laughs> Body camera ends with Henderson calling for backup to assist at the scene. Oh, my God. He was taken to the hospital for injuries, deemed non-life-threatening, and then to jail. Due to the nature of the incident, the sheriff's office requested the Michigan State Police do the criminal investigation while the sheriff's office did its own investigation. He was charged, uh, and the investigation into Henderson's actions found them to be justified with no police or policy violations observed. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, first of all, that dude, nine times out of ten, that dude shot and killed. Yeah. I think the fact that that dude, the cop, had his taser out already is the only reason why that guy's alive. Agreed. If he wouldn't, well, yeah, because he was—he tased him first. Yeah. No, you're right. Because otherwise he would have reached for his gun, but he had the taser in his hand. Yep. Correct. Dude would have been shot. The JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. Catch a new show every Monday through Friday, 6 till 10 a.m. on 941 JJO or streaming anywhere in the JJO app. Johnny and D. Nowhere but JJO.